anti-aggressionism. It's my simple ideology that leads to complex positions. The ideology basically just holds, thou shalt oppose acts of aggression and harmful fraud. And of course, avoid committing them. But let's look so let's look at how this would apply to something like the American Revolution and how it would result in very complex positions uh, on the American Revolution. So if we look at some of the pivotal events of that war, like for instance, starting at the beginning, uh, one of the earliest events, of course, was the Boston Massacre, which was not a massacre. Applying an anti-aggressionist philosophy to this event and the aftermath would lead to a very complex reaction to the event. Obviously, I would oppose the presence of those British troops in the location they were at. I can't even remember what they were defending that day. But I would oppose their presence there just because it cost tax dollars. Then, on the other hand, I would oppose the, uh, you know, the, 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 the mob that formed around them, throwing things at them. And I would oppose the British troops shooting at the mob. After that, I would oppose the colonials for making drawings of the incident that were not accurate. I would be comfortable with the idea that the soldiers were arrested, but I would want to know if any tax dollars were involved in the arrest. And, and if they were, I would start becoming uncomfortable. I would support the fact that the colonials were giving them some kind of due process, sort of, but then I would wonder about the tax expense for the due process, followed by supporting John Adams in his gutsy defense of the troops and the truth, while on the other hand, questioning whether he should be receiving any tax dollars. I guess then I would go on to outlining, outlining a complex series of opposition and support for John Adams for many of the other things that he did in his career. And it would be the same sort of disposition toward the colonials supporting this, opposing that, supporting this partially, but opposing the fact it was funded by tax dollars. I mean, it would just get extremely complicated. Oh, how much more simple it would be if I were just a nationalist or a colonialist or a loyalist. A blue team goon or a red team goon. How much easier it would be if I had a complex ideology that is poorly defined, like conservatism or liberalism. Let's take another uh, incident I'm try and another person. I'm trying to remember his name. I think it was Thomas Hitchens Hutchinson. I can't remember his exact name. He was the governor of Massachusetts. I believe that was his title uh, around the, the beginning of the revolution and before. Well, he was the one who said, uh, you know, nothing good can come from taxing the Americans. That's not quite an exact quote, but very close. You know, essentially, he, he begged London, don't initiate a tax on the Americans. I'm not, no, I'm not sure if he was against all taxes on Americans, but anyway, that, that quote was just, I mean, right, right away, right there. Uh, I love the guy, right? I, I mean, think how much of an improvement he would be over the nicest bureaucrat you know. And yet our ancestors essentially went to war with him. Um, he, he was an opponent of the uh, Stamp Act. But uh, colonialists, uh, rebels, uh, burned down his house uh, before the fighting had even really started. So again, applying the non-aggression principle to this governor, okay, maybe his house is funded through tax dollars, uh, so maybe he shouldn't be in that house initially. But on the other hand, should he really be throwing a rock through it or burning it down? Uh, his family is connected to it, or maybe even inside, which makes the attack on the house another, you know, it's a violation of the, the zero aggression principle on another level, since his kids are probably not guilty of very much, you're not even attacking the best target. On the other hand, who is he to be governing the entire area of Massachusetts? Surely he is imposing many inappropriate laws since he's part of a government. So I have to oppose him while opposing the attack on him. Would I have had any friends at all in 1773? Or 75 or whenever that one happened. I would 
you know, I would sort of support the colonial cause in the sense that, yes, you know, the um, the colonies should be independent of Britain. Smaller is better. But on the other hand, I'd find myself opposing so many things that they did. Uh, the the expulsion of Tories at the end of the war probably being the top grievance. So just imagine the kind of simplicity you would need to throw a rock. I mean, to throw a rock at someone or something, you, you'd have to have... I mean, they, they'd have to be the heart of evil. Or uh, engaging in an immediate bodily harm threat to an innocent. Well, think how much more purity would be required to fire a shot. I'm not sure this ideology could ever lead me to that point. I mean, I watch the films about Nazi Germany, and I come to almost exactly the same complexities in my reactions to each individual. I mean, think about that attack. There was one day when some, uh, you know, hotshot U.S. pilot in a P-47 is flying along and decides to shoot at a German military convoy. That makes perfect sense, right? I mean, that's about the most legitimate target you can think of, right? Well, who does he end up shooting? Oh, the guy who was about to unseat Hitler, Erwin Rommel. How well did shooting him work out? Now, actually, he didn't kill him. He just wounded him. But it took him out of the, uh, the, the, uh, the coup process, and I'm not sure that Rommel was definitely going to uh, support the coup, but he was definitely connected to the coup and knew about it, refused to support it, and was generally considered an honorable guy. That's how much can go wrong when, when things start seeming simple. Anyway, I could do a lot of videos about the complexities that the non-aggression tr uh, principle triggers in action. But it makes choosing those complex positions pretty easy.